Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever felt like you are on the outside looking in? I mean, maybe it was in, in sports, where you're on the team, but you're kind of on the outside. Like when people ask what position you play, you just say left. And then they, what, left field? No, left bench. I, I play left bench on, on the team. I'm pretty good at it. You see, you're on the team, but you're kind of on the outside. And in order to make it on the inside, in order to move from the bench to the field or on the court, you have to prove that you've earned that right. And so through your hard work, through your practice, uh, through maybe getting in with the coach, you can climb up the ladder and move to the inside. This happens in, in sports. It, this also happens uh, in, in relationships. If you, you move to a new city, even to a new church, uh, it seems like when you get there, everyone kind of knows each other. They, they already have uh, their friends, they're already kind of set, and so you're once again on the outside trying to get on the inside. And the way that you do that is you, you climb the social ladder. Uh, you, you get to know people. You, you maybe bribe with cookies or, or something like that. Uh, you, you make sure you tell that one joke that you have that, that pretty consistently gets a laugh. And then over time, you climb the social ladder and you move from the outside to the inside. And the business world works this way as well. You, you start a new job, you, you move to a different company, and all of a sudden you're back at the bottom of the ladder. You're back on the outside. And in order to move to the inside, you have to climb up the corporate ladder. You, you have to, to work more hours. You have to earn more than those that are already in. You have to prove yourself. You have to achieve more in order to move up, in order to be on the inside. See, the reality is we're ladder people. Almost every aspect of our life is based on it's up to our performance in order to move up. It's up to what you and I can achieve and do in order to make it to wherever it is that we're wanting to go. See, life on the outside is all about performance. It's about climbing the ladder. And this works in sports, it works in school, it works in relationships. It's how business operates. And so why would religion be any different? The reality is that for most people in this world, it's not. Religion is just another way that we climb the ladder. I mean, and just like you have to get in with the coach, you have to get in with the boss, you have to get to know uh, your teacher to be on the inside, God must work the same way. And so if I, if I achieve uh, more, if I give more, then maybe God uh, will really accept me. Or if, if on the flip side, if I'm not quite working out, if, if I don't really have my life together, uh, then, then maybe I've got to wait on the outside still. Shape things up, and then God will want me. Then, then I'll really be welcome. Then maybe I'll start going to church. I'll be active again. The reality is that every single religion with one exception, but every single religion operates on a ladder system. That, that God is up there somewhere, and your job is to climb to him through your works, through your giving, through your prayer. You work one step at a time up to God, trying to reach him, hoping that you've done just enough. The vast majority of people in the world operate with this kind of a system. Because we're latter people. That's who we are. And this is the issue that, that Paul is writing the letter of, of Galatians to address. Because this church, or this more likely it's a series of churches in the region of Galatia, um, they've become latter people. They're trying to climb through the works of the law, through their own performance, earn acceptance with God trying to put salvation on their shoulders, trying to contribute to the work of God that he has done for them. Because by nature, we're, we're latter people. 
And what Paul points out to them is that this may be natural for the rest of the world, but it's actually just going back into slavery. So he uses an image that they're familiar with, uh, Ishmael and Isaac. You know, those names might not mean much to us, uh, but to the original hearers of this letter, they would know exactly what was going on. I mean, Ishmael was the son that was born to Abraham through Hagar. W- when they heard God's promise and decided, eh, I know God said we're going to have a son, but I don't think the way he thinks it's going to happen is going to work. So let's go a different way. Abraham has a son through Hagar, who's a slave woman. And so the son Ishmael is born a slave, born into slavery. And out of his line come the Gentiles. Uh, those who are not of the, the people of God. And then we have Isaac, the, the child born miraculously of the promise that God gave to Sarah. And, and out of his line come the Israelites. And so this entire time, the, the church in Galatia thinks, oh, we're children of Isaac. But what Paul tells them in the letter, he says, no, by putting yourself back under the law, by trying to climb the ladder, you've become children of slavery. You're no longer children of the promise because you think it's about climbing to God, that that's who you are. You see, they've been set free, and yet they went back to life on the outside to trying to earn their way back in because we're latter people. I'm reminded of a a time growing up that I had a a unique experience with, with ladders, so I was in, in middle school, and our neighbor across the street, Mr. Brockmeyer, uh, was someone that we always kind of kept an eye on. Uh, he lived by himself. His uh, health wasn't very good. And so one day in the summer, my mom looks across the street, and Mr. Brockmeyer has an eight-foot ladder out, and he's climbing on his way up. And this is, this is a man that, if there's any kind of wind, he's going to topple over with the, this ladder. He, he did not weigh enough to keep the ladder in place. And so my mom sends my older brother over to try to talk him down off the ladder, figure out what he's doing, and do it for him. And so Justin goes across the street, and uh, we see him talking, and Mr. Brockmeyer climbs down the ladder, goes in the garage. Problem solved. Until a couple minutes later, my mom calls down and says, Andrew, get up here. So my brother gets up, and she sends him across the street. I said, no, Justin's already over there. What's the problem? Oh, he went in his garage and grabbed another ladder. He understood the premise, I shouldn't be on the ladder in the first place, so yes, you can take my spot. And then what did he do? Went in the garage, grabbed another one, climbed right back on up. So Andrew goes over there, talks him down off the second ladder. He goes back in the garage. And at this point, we're watching. And so the instant he goes in that garage, mom goes, get your shoes on. Go over there. I don't know how many ladders he has in that garage. Uh, My sister is now on standby. And I swear, as I'm walking over the street, she's got neighbors on speed dial. I don't know how many ladders he has, but we're running out of kids. See, this is what happened in the church in Galatia. Paul had set them free. He had said... You don't need to get to God by climbing a ladder. And they had climbed down and said, yes, this is great. Thank you, Paul. And then Paul leaves, and what do they do? They go in the garage, and they grab another ladder. And they insist that by my activity, by my actions, that's what's going to earn favor with God. Because we are by nature ladder people. Every single religion operates this way. It's how you get to God is by your behavior, by your activity, by your prayers, by your giving. That's what earns you merit and favor. And here's the reality. You never know if you've climbed high enough. You've never known if you've worked hard enough. You never know if you're truly welcome, if you're really in. Life on the ladder is life that's always on the outside. Life that's all about your performance never gives peace. Every religion operates as a latter religion, except one. Except the one where the one true God runs after the prodigal, goes out and seeks the lost sheep. The God who comes to this earth 
takes on flesh, takes on our sin and pays the price for us. That God, your God, the one true God, is not at the top of a ladder saying, climb higher. He's at the foot of a cross saying, it is finished. God does not accept you because of your works. He welcomes you because of what Christ has done for you. He doesn't choose you or deny you because of your family, because of who you're related to by blood. No, He welcomes you into His family because of the blood of Jesus. You're no longer on the outside. God has brought you in. Not because of what you've done, but because of what He has done for you. You're no longer a slave. You are now a son or daughter. See, when Sadie was baptized earlier this morning, you notice what we didn't give her? We didn't say, hey, here's a ladder. Start climbing. No, we gave her a light. Said, in this world of darkness, you have the light of the world. You have the promises of God. You have everything that you need. So get rid of the ladders. You don't need them anymore. You've been set free. Because when life is no longer about your performance, you're free to live with joy. I experienced this kind of free joy uh, in, in kind of a weird way. In high school, uh, I was in marching band. If you, if you wonder, how did I ever get this cool? That was where it all started. Right, so it, in marching band, Lindbergh High School uh, in the, the early uh, 2000s, uh, we were pretty good, actually. Uh, so in, in any competition we were in, we were in the running for, for a trophy or, or to, to finish in one of the top places. So every home football game on Friday nights, uh, we would do the halftime show. And it was always, in, in our mind, it was preparation for the competition that was to come the next day on Saturday. Uh, and so th there was always kind of pressure to perform uh, because this is the dress rehearsal for, for what's coming next. And, and th there's results and trophies and accolades in the balance. Until one year, the, the schedule got messed up because of rain. And all of a sudden, we had a football game after our season was done. I mean, the, the trophies were already in the case. The results were already in. We weren't rehearsing anymore. And so we look on the counter and say, hey, there's a football game. I wonder who's doing the halftime show. We're not. We're done. Come to find out, we were still doing the halftime show. And so some of us that were uh, upperclassmen, we went to our director and said, why are we doing this? This is crazy. We haven't rehearsed. We don't know what we're doing. There, there's no goal. There's no end, end point. The results are already in. The, the trophies ha have already uh, been put away. What's the point? And what we realized was the results were already in. The trophies were already in the case. There was no more pressure on our performance. We were set free to perform with joy. We had the freedom to fail without messing up an entire season. We had the freedom to share a gift, something that we've been working hard towards, and not worry about the implications or any accolades we would receive. See, what happened is that ended up being our best performance of the entire season. Because when life is no longer about your performance, you're free to have a purpose. When life is all about your performance, when you're climbing the ladder, you find that your hands are busy climbing and you don't have any freedom to serve others. When life is no longer about your performance, you're free to have joy. When you don't have to do anything, when you don't have to do anything to earn salvation, when you don't have to do anything to earn God's favor, what are you going to do? What are you going to choose to do with the freedom that God has given you? You don't have to do anything. So what are you going to do with that freedom? This is the question that Paul is driving towards in Galatians 5, and he ends up answering it in verse 13. 
He says, you've been set free, but use that freedom not to serve your sinful nature, but to serve one another humbly in love. You've been set free to serve one another humbly in love. That's what real freedom is about. You're free to serve, to, to serve at a funeral luncheon or with our landscape crew, like we had people serving yesterday, uh, to serve your neighbor across the street or down the road, and to serve knowing that you don't need to receive anything in return. You don't need a pat on the back. You don't need acknowledgments. You don't need a trophy or a ribbon because life is no longer about climbing the ladder. Your life is lived under the banner of the cross that says it is finished. And so you're free to serve with joy, not expecting anything back in return because God has given you everything in Christ Jesus. You're free to serve. You're free to give. You're free to give to the ministry of God in this place and throughout the world. Not in order to earn God's love. Not in order to receive the, the accolades and to impress your neighbors. No, you're free to be generous so that your neighbors know the love of God in Christ Jesus. You're free to serve. You're free to be generous. And you're free to forgive. Because God is not at the top of a ladder saying, earn this, pay off your debt. God is at the base of a cross saying, you are forgiven. It is finished. And so we take that message that's been given to us. We take that forgiveness that has been promised to us and we freely give it to those around us. We didn't deserve it, neither did they. And so we give what God has freely given to us. And when we forgive, it sets us free. So get rid of the ladders. And don't go in the garage and go grab another one. You don't need to, to climb in your life to earn social status, to earn uh, the, the financial uh, freedom that you think you need. And most certainly, you don't need to climb the ladder to earn the favor of God. God has come to you. He has set you free. You are his child. And who the Son sets free is free indeed. In the name of Jesus, amen.